Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Uh, welcome to this episode of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. Uh, this is Wednesday. You're used to seeing the, uh, this broadcast on Sundays. I'm still going to continue the Sunday broadcast, but uh, I think it's, it's so enjoyable for me. I decided I want to try to do it twice a week, so I'll be doing it also on Wednesdays. But on Wednesday, it'll be a different subject. I've decided that uh, um, I, I want to just go through the book of Proverbs, uh, you know, one, one, two verses at a time, and, and just discuss it in the, in the hope that I, I can gain more wisdom and the, the panelists, the viewers, because that's really the whole point of the book of, of Proverbs. And uh, I know I could, I could use more wisdom. Uh, I, I think that we all can. So hopefully that's what we'll do. It'll take a while to get through the whole book, but uh, uh, it'll be every Wednesday. I'll call it Wisdom Wednesdays until we get through this uh, this book, and then we'll figure out probably what to do next on the Wednesdays uh, studies. Uh, with me right now, I have Brother Sam. Uh, Sam, want to introduce yourself? And hello, Brother Luke. How are you? Uh, my name is Sam. My YouTube channel name is Thick Shades. Go to thickshades.com or youtube.com slash uh, slash slash <laughs> slash thickshades. Thank you. I, I'm really looking forward to this uh, uh, the studies. Uh, and uh, I mean, you know, my mother used to tell me, "Hey, read the book of uh, I mean, read the chapter of Proverbs every day. If it is uh, if today is 20th, then you know, read chapter 20 and so forth." So this bring back all you know, good old child. Not child, but you know, adolescent, I guess, teenage memories, and you know, I I get to think about my mother, and you know, and all good goody stuff. So I really look forward to gaining certain knowledge and truth through these studies. Great, thank you. God bless you. Okay, thank you, brother. And yeah, that is that's a good point. Uh, the book of Proverbs has thirty-one chapters, so it, it's been a very common uh, thing. That people will um, read or study uh, one chapter every day for 31 days, and each month repeat that, and uh, that would be probably very good, very good for us to not only understand but kind of in, get these ideas really uh, embedded deeply into our minds and our hearts. Uh, as I said, uh, the Book of Proverbs is really all about wisdom. And okay, let's get started with it right now. I'll, I'm going to the Bible Hub screen, and I'll just read a verse or two or three or whatever I think, and stop, and then we can discuss it. Um, Proverbs chapter one: uh, the proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom justice and judgment and equity, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. Uh, to understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Wow. That's, uh, let's talk about that just broadly, and then we'll go one verse at a time for a second here. Uh, brother, how, how does that strike you right off the bat? This, this verse, you know, along with other Proverbs, uh, where um, this is very famous, you know, verse, the fear of the Lord is beginning of knowledge. You know, um, it's like when you uh, reverence something, when you pay respect something, you tend to, uh, you know, be careful, you know, around that. So you take extra caution. Well, uh, I think that's what what uh, what the fear is. And it's being used in terms of reverence, I think, and. Uh, you know, a lot of people nowadays, I, I, I see, 
despising God, and I see a lot of people judging God as if they are God, and without having any fear, and, and so forth. And whenever I <laughs> see that, you know, uh, I cannot help but say they are fools. You know, I mean, how can that be? Possible without God, you cannot learn anything. <laughs> there, there, there is no knowledge. So uh, when when some of these guys kind of reject Christ and have uh, no, I guess I don't know, no fear uh, because of their ignorance or or their hardened heart, uh, whatever the reason, uh, when they kind of try to erase God. Uh, they'll be keeping themselves further away from knowledge and wisdom, I think. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting of, uh, of the, the verses, I mean, that string of verses that I read, uh, you, you uh, singled out and focused on, on that particular one. It is probably the most famous of that, of that group. And uh, um, there's a lot of people that insist that the word fear there does mean to you actually have fear and you're you're afraid you're you're scared of, of God and um, I, I think the way that you interpret it uh, to, as far as respect and reverence um, it, it has another application and I, I think that uh, you know the idea that uh, we're going to um, God is angry with us today we know that because because uh, our, our sins are already paid for, uh, Jesus died for all of our sins, and that the barrier that existed between man and God was sin, Jesus removed the barrier. So now we, we have uh, access uh, to God, and we can have this relationship. So um, there's a lot of people who understand this truth, that, that God is not an angry God that's, that's, that's just out to really look at you and scrutinize you and beat you down and punish you in hell. All, I mean, that's not the God in the Bible, really. And, and so, but, but your idea of fear uh, for some of the people who are like God-haters, uh, yeah, I think that's, that's the correct application in that case uh, because there is a... There is a consequence for, for mocking God. I think God does, uh, when you mock him, you know, it's the law of weeping and sowing. You know, that Jesus mentioned it and Paul mentioned it. And uh, even though as saved believers, you and I are not, never going to go to hell, regardless of our, our future sins. We don't want to sin, but we're, it's going to be impossible to live a perfect sinless life to, from now till the, our last breath, but we don't want to. But we know, we're comforted to know that when we do sin, that Jesus has paid for it. And so, but th that doesn't mean that bad behavior in our life doesn't, doesn't also have some consequences that come with it. And that's the law of reaping and sowing. And that's also the idea that it says in Hebrews where God is, will chastise his children. So um, it, is, uh, it is wise to have this fear of the reaping and sowing and the, and, the, and the chastisement and also the mockers and the haters of God, there are consequences, so they should fear. But really I think that the attitude we're supposed to have from this word fear is the way you explained it, reverence and respect. When we have reverence and respect for God, like for me, I know people who use the name Jesus casually. Oh Jesus, and this or that, or you know, and, and they're they're just they're they don't re they're not respecting it, and they, they uh, uh, it it really bothers me. Some of the people I know closely and I love them, and uh, you know I've mentioned it. Uh, I told them I said I, I don't think you should ever say the name Jesus unless it's with absolute respect. Uh, and and uh, so that whether uh, whether someone's a God hater. Or they're just not giving the, the amount of reverence to, to God and to, to the name of Jesus that, that they they deserve. Then uh, that's that is to me the fear of God or the, or the reverence of God. Let's say hi to Brother Bill. Uh, Brother Bill, uh, uh, did you hear the first couple of minutes? Uh, did you hear the first couple of minutes, Brother Bill?
Brother Bill, I think you got a, a mute. Yeah, you're silent, Brother Bill. Can you get the sound working? You look very holy. <laughs> Still no sound. Let me see. Control room. Bill, uh... Am I hearing you? Say something, Brother Bill. No, you're... Yeah, I don't have him muted. Maybe he has a audio problem. Okay, I unmuted him. How do you unmute though? Hmm. You can uh, he can unmute himself. I think someone is playing the audio. Hmm. I I don't know what to do, Bill. Uh hide from broadcast. No, I did that now. I hit him, I muted him. I don't want to, but how do you unmute it once you've done it? Okay. He's not yeah. muted. Back yeah, in a minute. Reboot. Okay, yeah, let's try that. Okay, let's see if he can get on and make it work this time. But okay, Brother Sam, based upon what I said in response to your comment about uh, fe fear or, or reverence, uh, what do you, what do you think of that? Well, you know, as I said, um, the, you know, like there's a little Asian. Eastern saying, like, you know, it's from the Art of War uh, by Sun Tzu, and, and there's the line along the line uh, that uh, if, if you don't know your opponent, you cannot really defeat your opponent. I mean, that's, that's quite not obvious, and they're, that's one of the reasons why they send out, you know, spies and, you know, as by analogy and all that, try to get information, more information you know of your opponent, uh, you are, uh, you know, that much ahead. Now, the problem is that if you do not reverence others, you cannot know about them, you know. Even with, like, this espionage, for example, if you are going, if you are sending a spy to a different country, then, um, you know, that spy, particular spy got to, cannot be, like, all careless. You got you to gotta be careful. You got to, you know, pay attention. You got to respect his surroundings so that he can learn from, uh, from that and also gather information. So I think it's, it works a similar way. I'm not saying to, to defeat God. <laughs> what I'm saying is that, uh, without the fear of of the Lord, if, without the fear of the Lord, you know you cannot really know God. You know, so I desire to know God, and that's one of the one of the reasons why I believe on Christ. I, you know, I like to know more about Christ. So you know, as Christ said, knowing Christ is knowing God. So you know, as long as you have this. Uh, you know, like when you have a reverence towards, towards your father, you know, you don't just like, you, know, you don't disrespect your your father, you know, the person who brought you out in this, on this uh, earth, so to say. And of course, you know, it's, you know, we're all from God. But, you know, we, even with our own father, we pay that much of reverence. And I think that's one of the reasons why we can also learn more about our parents and so forth. You know, it applies in almost in all areas and aspects, I think. And especially when it comes to you know, knowing God, and if, when you have that uh, attitude and you have that attitude, you know, you will surely uh, gain knowledge, wisdom, and instruction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, a few minutes ago I was trying to close out the control room section. I, instead I ended up closing me out. I had to get linked back on to the show here. So I, I missed about a minute earlier what you said, but uh, 
I heard good, the, good. I, I heard I, the I, song I, leaving. <laughs> and then I was like, uh oh, he better be back in five minutes. <laughs> you know, yeah. Otherwise, the hangout will be over. So yeah. I always keep on talking. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, all right, let's. Um, I hope Bill can work out his problem and join us. But uh, let's let's go through this whole section. I read about five or six or seven verses. Let me let's go through one verse at a time now and see. Um, he says, "The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel." Okay. Uh, Let's talk just a little bit about uh, this Solomon, and the son of David, king of Israel. Can you? Uh, I mean, he's like an awesome king, but you know, he's one of, I mean, if not the wisest as far as the humans concerned. Uh, as you know, that uh, he prayed for wisdom, he didn't pray for wealth, and God saw that, um, you know very humbling for him and he was very I guess righteous before God um, and you know a lot of people, a lot of us kind of ask for some worldly stuff but uh, you know we can the fact that Solomon asked for wisdom you know uh, I mean wisdom bring you everything I mean he I mean the fact that he was able to ask for wisdom instead of wealth and other things it, it kind of tells you how smart the guy was, you know, to begin with. It, it, it tells you, you know, his wisdom to begin with. So, you know. Yeah, I think that's a very, very good point. And a lot of people probably are not aware of the fact that um, he, I mean, he could have prayed for anything. He could have prayed for his wealth. Well, he ended up getting great wealth because of wisdom. He could have prayed for you know, a lot of beautiful women, and he, he had a lot of wives and harems of women, and uh, the greatest collection of stallions and the horses. But see, all those things came because he did start, had a starting point was this understanding, this wisdom, that if he acquired more wisdom, everything else would, would be coming to him. And uh, hopefully, this study of wisdom that we're going to be doing here on Wednesdays, we will gain some wisdom. And with wisdom, uh, many other good things come. So that's a very, very good point. Uh, let's see if Brother Bill can speak now. Roy, can you hear me this time? <laughs> yeah, we can hear you. And I'll tell you what, I love that uh, what you've done there with the visual part. You, you're actually a beautiful man now. I tell you, yeah, I, I do. I, I feel so saintly. You know, I'm saint now. I'll take it off in a minute. I'm just, I'm still enjoying the, the fun factor. So. That's fine. But um, uh, we haven't done very much. I just introduced the show. And we took the first few verses of of, uh, of uh, Proverbs. We're going to be going through it, you know, verse at a time, and and we're we discussed it as a whole. And Sam singled out the verse about the fear of the Lord being the beginning of wisdom beginning of understanding we talked about that so if you we, we talked about how the word fear of the Lord can mean actually fear because hey, there are consequences for bad behavior and there's a and also uh, we could take it as being reverence and respect and uh, uh, so a lot of people are very disrespectful and don't give for example using the name of God or Jesus very casually without absolute reverence and respect uh, I find that very bothersome uh, and then now we're talking about the very first verse uh, that uh, the King Solomon uh, introducing him and finding out that Brother Sam talked about how Solomon could have prayed for anything, but he was wise enough to pray for wisdom, and with wisdom everything else came. Brother Bill, we're going to talk about that, and then we'll have uh, introduce Brother Jeff. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, also, yeah, sounds good to me. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think yeah, the context probably most likely is reverence you know when you reverence the Lord that that really is the the, 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 the beginning of wisdom and understanding you know because how can how can you have genuine godly wisdom without reverence and the God you want the wisdom from so it has to yeah, it has to begin there doesn't it knowing that he's the giver and taker of all things and, and can you tell me your reaction to the idea that Solomon prayed for wisdom when he could have, he could have prayed for anything, and he chose to pray for wisdom. And you know, the world, uh, they, they a lot of people in the world 
claimed that Solomon was the wisest man who ever lived, apart from, of course, Jesus, who's, who's God. But uh, Solomon is known for this greatest wisdom. And so please uh, give me your reaction to that, too. Well, yeah, I think he prayed for for, for the right thing, you know, because with wisdom, you can... Uh, this is an English kind of word. You, you get your finger, your fingers in many pies, whether it's, you know, wisdom to, to gain financial things or wisdom to gain happiness. I know he kind of went a little bit off the wall towards the end of his life, but his initial prayer and, and the initial, you know, gift that he wanted from God, you, you, you can have your fingers in all the pies and you can be extremely blessed. So if he would have just said, ask oh, for money, yeah, he probably got money, but how would he get? He wouldn't have had bought any other wisdom for anything else to make friends or to, to, to bring his family up or any any other area. So wisdom's a good thing. Yes. Okay. I'm going to ask uh, Brother Jeffrey to introduce himself. And uh, we're, Brother Jeffrey, we're talking about the Book of Proverbs, and we're going through it one verse at a time. Uh, but uh, uh, first I want to tell you, I watched the last Hangouts that we did last Sunday uh, uh, over again, and Brother Jeffrey, you did an outstanding job. I, I think some of the questions and points that you made were just wonderful. So uh, I'm, I'm really glad to see you back and participating again today. Uh, could you respond to, if you don't have the book of Proverbs, the Bible right there, we're, we're talking about two things. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding. And the idea that Solomon um, is the, you know, the writer of the book, and he's the son of David, the king of Israel, and he initially prayed for wisdom. Could you give me a reaction to that, brother? Wisdom. Um, yeah, uh, not too good on that one, Proverbs. I mean, I'm starting to search through my old Buddhist stuff now. I, I know <laughs> I'm going to get off track. I think I'm, I'm going to sit it out. You, you talk a bit more, and then I'll be able to um, get get more into this. Yeah. All right. Okay, I'll right. try the wisdom anyway, but I'm still stupid. So. All right, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Okay, uh, we're going to go to verse two now. Um, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity, uh, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge, and discretion. Let's stop there. There's an awful lot of great things in, in those uh, three verses. Uh, let me ask uh, Brother Bill, who's joined us a little bit late, give him another opportunity to comment on that. So verses 2, 3, and 4 in Proverbs 1. Well, yeah, that's, that's all wise, wise stuff there, isn't it, already? You know, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. So, yeah, with wisdom, it isn't the same as, uh, like, just knowledge, gathering knowledge and stuff. Wisdom is deeper. It's, like I said, to perceive the words of understanding. That is, it's the perception of the knowledge as well. So that's, that's why wisdom is, is far better than knowledge. That's what I can glean from, you know, verse 2, you know, straight away. In verse 3, to receive instruction of wisdom, justice and judgment, which, which you know, inclines me to believe that, you know, when you have full wisdom and instruction, you actually perceive what is happening. You know, you will gain, you know, a sense of justice and a correct se sense of judgment. Because as we know with the story of Solomon later on, you know, he has to make, uh, you know, a lot of judgments, and, and obviously that you have the infamous one with a with a baby. And I assume we'll get onto that another time. So I won't, I won't go on too much about that. But he certainly was wise in his justice, and you know, he, he perceived and really understood deeply, you know, the the, the knowledgeable things from God. Okay, that's very good. I I'm going to ask Brother Sam if he could respond to something Bill Bill said. And that is that uh, uh, wisdom is greater than the knowledge. Um, I, I think that wisdom is having knowledge and then applying it. Uh, a person ha can have knowledge or understanding, but don't apply it. But we only have wisdom when we actually apply this knowledge and understanding. That's, that's how I see it. Brother Sam? 
Yeah, I agree. Uh, you raised up a good point. Uh, the Book of Proverbs. Uh, for those of you out there, that if you want to be a little wiser, the book, read the Book of uh, the Proverbs. Now, that will be the first step for you to be wiser. And now, in order for you to make that decision, you have to be wise enough. Also, in order to understand what's written in the Book of Proverbs, you got to be wise enough. Now, how do you become wise enough to understand the Book of Proverbs? Simply ask God. And your wisdom will triple, 100 fours, 200 fours, and so forth. Yeah, I, I would add that uh, uh, praying, you know, a lot of times, obviously, we on the panel here, uh, we're not your typical person. First of all, we're saved. And then after, after the fact that we're saved and the Holy Spirit of God is inside us, living in us, and transforming us each day, so we're different than your typical person. Uh, but because of that, I imagine that you guys pray on a regular basis. Now, I don't, I don't have a set-aside time for prayer, like, you know, every morning or every night or every day at noon. Um, I pray throughout the day as I'm thinking about things in God. I'm always calling on God, and, and it's, it's like an ongoing conversation. But I know that in the past, I was, would pray for patience. And, and then I got a little bit afraid because I thought, I realized that for me to, to acquire patience, that I would have to actually endure trials and tribulations because patience is only demonstrated by how you deal with these things that, that would normally make you impatient. Uh, so I stopped praying for patience. <laughs> I didn't want to go through the, the, the difficult times that would necessarily learn it. So true, so true. Guess what, Brother Luke? Yeah, what? Um, even the patient itself is part of wisdom. You know? So it's best to um, ask for wisdom just like Solomon did. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah I, I agree. But praying for wisdom, as you said, um, I think that would be very wise. Solomon did it. That should be what we should be doing. And then as we're praying for wisdom, and then we're studying the book about wisdom, the book of Proverbs, and, and having this fellowship and discussion, I expect we're going to get wiser, and then everything in our lives will, will be affected by that. Uh, I'm going to leave the – I'm not going to call on Brother Jeffrey, uh, but anytime you, you decide you want to talk, just wave to me or something, and I'll call on you then, okay? I don't want to put you on this. Yeah, it's worth mentioning as well that, that with godly wisdom, especially, because there's obviously a difference between worldly wisdom and godly wisdom. You know, with godly wisdom, you, you also get discernment, and that is very lacking in the body of Christ today, and I think it's very needful to, to get that godly discernment in, in certain situations. Yeah. Wisdom, uh, a lot of things come from wisdom, you're right. Um, so let me ask you about some of these things here that are on this list. Um, to know wisdom and instruction. So we got instruction to perceive the words of understanding. We got instruction, understanding, um, to receive the instruction of wisdom. We got justice, judgment, and equity. And then we got to give the subtlety to the simple. And then, of course, he says to the young man, knowledge and discretion. Um, so, uh, I, ideally, we get wisdom at a, at a, as a young man. If we get wisdom as a young man, we're miles and miles ahead of everybody else. Most people think that as a person that gets older, they get wiser. And, you know, that that hopefully and you know, many times is the case because of experience we gain wisdom. But it's not necessarily true. You can't always count on someone being older and then being able to give you wise advice. I've had a lot of people come to me thinking I'm older and they can get advice from me. And uh, I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not sure that... Uh, uh, you know, I have the right answers all the time and have that kind of wisdom. That, but 
if you get wisdom when you're a young man, and that's what it says here in verse 4, to the young man knowledge and discretion. Um, so we've got the ideas of instruction, understanding, justice, and judgment and equity. Let me ask uh, Brother Bill to comment on that. Yeah, well, as you actually read that, what what came to mind straight away? And that's all time, believe it or not. Was uh, two Timothy chapter three, and you got the verses fifteen and sixteen, especially. I just is that okay to read them out? Mm -hmm. And it says, "And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith." which is in Christ Jesus. And then it goes, all scriptures given by inspiration of God and is proper all for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. And then this is a key word for instruction in righteousness. So there is a lot tied in, you know, you know where we're talking about wisdom, there's a lot tied in uh, the, the godly side of wisdom, you know, which can make you wise unto salvation and give you, you know, instruction in righteousness. So it's a very needful thing, I feel. Yeah, uh, brother, brother Sam, the the idea of uh, as he says in in Timothy, uh, we get we gain this wisdom through the, the scriptures. Uh, we know that the Book of Solomon is that's its that's its uh, as brother Jack Smack he he made a video just the other day talking about um, uh, um, I forgot the name of it, but it's like a principle statement. Uh, in other words, a, a book many times comes with a statement of this is the point of the book, a purpose statement. And uh, in, in, in the book of Proverbs, the purpose statement is that it's so that we can gain wisdom. That doesn't mean that we can't gain wisdom from Timothy and John and, and uh, Galatians and all, all the others. But, uh, yeah, the, through the scriptures we, gain, we can gain wisdom. Uh, but, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, I, I agree with you. I agree with Brother Bill. Uh, if I were to add, uh, we need to, um, uh, you know, distinguish uh, worldly wisdom and heavenly wisdom. I think, and the Brother Bill, uh, I think that's where he was alluding. You know, you can be smart, uh, street smart, but that doesn't mean that you are godly smart. So, uh, you know, the instruction is like where is is uh, giving you the instruction how tos. Wisdom is like what Brother Luke was saying, the results and uh, you know, the whole shebang, you know, patience, love, and all that. So, uh, you know, uh, when we become perfect in Christ, you know, we gain all this, you know, by, as, a, as a result of fruit, as, as, as a fruit of the Spirit. So, you know, I, I'm not saying that, um, you know, Everyone who is born again, you know, is all of a sudden become wise and enlightened and, you know, perfect or, or so forth. And as we know that we grow in, in, in Christ, you know, some people grow faster and some people a little less. So the point is um, that we encourage and we edify each other um, and, um, you know, try to share the knowledge of God and and the wisdom, and I think the proverb, the book of proverb, is really a good place to start. You know, like to build the fundamental, to build the basics. Um, you know, of the whole relationship. I think. Um, Bill, brother Bill, you were going to say something. Uh, yeah, I was. Oh, yeah, yeah, because obviously Timothy. You know where it says, you know that that that, you know that God's words, you know the Scripture, you know can can make you wise unto salvation. But you know the chances are because this is early on, you know before we had the whole canon of Scripture, so we was probably reading Proverbs anyway, and obviously Isaiah, then he would have seen this, you know this Christ, and he would have learned of him, and then got saved. So yeah, Proverbs was probably a, a good daily portion of his read, I should imagine. Well, when it says make us wise unto salvation, um, I think we can all agree that the very first step is gaining the wisdom uh, unto salvation. 
and, and because I mean you could be wise in your life and you could acquire all kinds of wonderful things because you're a wise and yet you never have the understanding and wisdom and application of the salvation and that would be a great great loss because you will enjoy 80 years on this earth and, and a lot of good things but after that you don't have eternal life in the kingdom of God instead you you suffer judgment the second death in the lake of fire so that would be a real shame if someone gained all this wisdom but never had the wisdom unto salvation and then it will also the wisdom under salvation gives us the Holy Spirit indwelling us and the scripture says that we can't really even understand all the scriptures unless we have the Holy Spirit in us so um, Bill or, or Sam respond to that please Yes, of course, that's uh, quite obvious, you know. Uh, the Holy Spirit uh, shall guide us to all truth, including any sort of uh, understanding, including any sort of uh, wisdom or knowledge, uh, you know, including whether uh, something is of God or not. So, in other words, uh, we, uh, you know, as we reverence God, uh, we gain uh, more, more wisdom. I mean, it's just like what the scripture says. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know how else I can put it. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Sometimes the best answer is just quoting a scripture, and you can't. You cannot say it any better than that, Brother Bill. Well, yeah, yeah. Like I'm in agreement with what what you and Sam have said. You know, I've just posted up <laughs> one Corinthians. 127 on the chat bar which says but God have chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise so this is worldly wisdom that, that yeah it may benefit you temporarily as you just said for 80 years uh, and then it goes on to say and God have chosen the weak things of the world to con you know to confound the things which are mighty so God's wisdom you know, in, the, in, in the world's eyes is very often seen as as, as foolish and as weak yet it really is of a great value you know and it does confine worldly wisdom so godly wisdom above all yeah so I, I would say since we're, be, we're at the very beginning of this whole process of studying the, the book of Proverbs I expect it'll be a long study getting through it all but the, the very beginning the first step is getting this wisdom unto salvation uh, by and that is just the wisdom of understanding that we need Jesus to provide the salvation because we can't get it any other way and we can't get it through our own efforts. So once we're wise enough to understand that we need to call on Jesus and believe in him and what he's done for us by paying for our sins and raising himself from the dead and offering us life everlasting, when we're wise enough to understand that, we gain the gift of eternal life we gain the gift of the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. And once we get that, if you haven't done that, if you are, do it now. Get the Holy Spirit living in you. And then as we go through these scriptures, you will have, be able to understand them in a way that you couldn't, couldn't without the Holy Spirit. Okay, uh, let's move on to more verses unless someone has something to add to that. Okay. Um, A wise man will hear, this is verse 5, a wise man will hear and will increase learning and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. Wise counsels. Uh, I know that many times as we go through this whole book, the 31 chapters, that it's going to be talking about wise getting wise counsel. So let, this is our first introduction to the idea of getting wise counsel. So let me get your reaction to that. Um, I don't know if you guys are frozen or you have nothing to say. Oh, I'll be right back, Bill. Okay. Uh, Sam, if you're there, uh, what is the idea of a wise, wise counsel? 
verse 5. Oh, just, then, just a minute, brother, 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 look just a minute. I got I got I have something came up. Um, so I got let me take care of that real quick. I'll be right back. <laughs> Sorry. That's fine. Okay, so I'm going to uh, just say that the idea of getting counsel we're going to see that in the, the book of Proverbs over and over again, it keeps reintroducing the idea of accepting counsel from other wise people. And, uh, of course, when people use the scriptures as the source of the, the teaching, the instruction, then uh, that's something that we should um, require. If someone's giving us counsel and uh, we don't see any scriptural support for it, then I, I, I would really question their, that counsel. But if we're getting wise counsel, and we see that the scriptures support that counsel, then it is wise to listen. And, uh, you know, I've had a lot of people, I will say that in my life, I've made a lot of mistakes, and I, I have been counseled from wise people, uh, corrected, and also saw in the scriptures the uh, the instructions that I needed, and heeded heeded the the counsel, heeded the instruction in the scriptures, and because of that, um, I benefited. I know I still have a lot to to gain from more wisdom and more counsel. So uh, this is something that is a theme that's going to be very important for us to understand is to, uh, to listen when we're counseled by other believers. doesn't mean that every time someone wants to give us, uh, another believer wants to give us some counsel, that they're going to be right necessarily either. But we should, it is wise to listen. All right? I don't know if anybody's back or it's just me, but let me see. Okay. Does anybody want to comment on that before I move on? No, I, I, only to say that you know I agree. I agree. With, you know, wholeheartedly what you just said. You know, you know, it's truth. Truth is truth. Uh, Brother Bill, did you have a personal thought on on any experiences in your life where you have received counsel? From someone. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had oftentimes I've had to take a godly counsel, you know, throughout life. I've had secular counsel on issues, and that that didn't really avail much. But you know, godly counsel really is helpful. And you know, to be honest, the greatest counsel I get is is from God Himself, the Holy Ghost. He, you know, he, he gives me scriptures at times. You know, if you're feeling low, he gives you scriptures to encourage you and embolden you. If you're feeling fearful, you know, he will give you scriptures to to to, to make you bold. You know, and that, and that you know, he is the mighty counselor, and that is that is surely for a reason. But obviously, he does use people. You know, because he doesn't he doesn't always just directly you know quote scripture. At sometimes he directs you to other Christians for the benefit of the body. And, and encouraging one another to, to, to take counsel with. So, yeah, very important point. Yeah, I'd like to add that uh, I think we're talking about verse 5. Um, there, obviously, if you're wise, you're going to uh, attain uh, wise counsels. The, uh, I think when the scripture says wise counsel, I think it's talking about the strats, like, you know, like when you strategize making strategy or planning things ahead, uh, you know, you probably notice that, you know, people who are wiser than most of the people, they know ahead, they plan ahead. You, you kind of know who is going to move a certain way, who is going to make certain moves. So that sort of uh, strategy, and because you have gained wider perspective, you can see different perspectives as well because you have wider perspective and you can see where other people are coming from you know what's going to be to the point that you can 
uh, you know, make wise counsels. You can um, plan uh, ahead, so to say, and that also help you uh, kind of organize, but get things done at the same time, save time. So it is very important to truly uh, gain and attain this sort of uh, 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 wisdom. You know, so as verse 5 said, a man, a wise man will hear and will increase learning. I mean, he's not going to, obviously he's a wise man, he's not going to <laughs> hear any mumbo jumbo. But when he hears it, he's going to hear something wise. And because of that, his wisdom will increase and, and more and more and more. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. So, as I said, have many different perspectives, many different strategies and plans, many options, and that will only help them to execute very, very uh, productively and precise to the point. Okay. Uh, very, very good. I'm going to move to the next uh, verse here. This is something that I'm not sure about, verse 6. Maybe uh, maybe someone has an answer for me here. To understand a proverb, and um, see, uh, the book of Proverbs, unlike, uh, say, the book of John or the book of Galatians, um, they're, they're telling you a sequence of, of, of um, verses that tell you a story. And they're sequential, and uh, it's an actual cohesive story of events. Uh, whereas the book of Proverbs, is a, a collection of sayings, uh, a proverb. Uh, it's, it may be a very clever statement that has a lot of truth and wisdom in it, but it's not a, uh, it's not a continuous story that we're going to be going through in, the, in these proverbs. So to understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise, uh, so a proverb is the words of the wise, it wouldn't be considered a proverb if it wasn't coming from someone who was wise and, and had wisdom in it. And they're dark sayings. Now, the dark sayings, maybe if we look at a different translation, it'll make more sense. Uh, as we've discussed before, I think we're all King James firstists. We, we're looking at King James first, but maybe looking at another translation or a or a commentary or something, we'll get more, but I'd like to get your idea of this verse, particularly dark sayings. Yeah, I'm, I'm one step ahead here. I already, I already had a look at that in, in, in my concordance, and, and the dark sayings are basically uh, the enigmatic things, things that would seem to be enigma, obviously yeah. without the revelation of an Holy Ghost, and, and you wouldn't get that normally. But, you know, to, to understand the dark sign is to unravel these enigmatic signs, these almost like riddles, you know. Yeah, a, bit like, uh, a bit like the Proverbs, really. Yeah, I mean, not the Proverbs, the, when Jesus spoke in parables, didn't he? You know, it, it was there for a reason that, that those were, were, you know, who had ears would, would understand it. But those who, who, who were hard at heart and, and had their ears closed and their hearts closed wouldn't understand the parables. So it's a similar sort of vein, I think. Yep, yep, exactly. Dark saying simply it means something hidden, something secretive, uh, something mysterious, something beyond our mis uh, understanding, uh, beyond humanly understanding. Uh, that's one of the reasons why when we are in, in the Holy Spirit, we understand uh, these sort of uh, wisdom and sayings. So. You know, the wisdom or knowledge is just, it's not going to be just out there for you to just grab, you know. You, it, it's like, um, you gotta, it seems like you got to search for it almost, including something quite secretive and hidden. You know, God is not going to put it out there for you to just grab it. Of course, some things are to be grabbed, grab, but there are some things, especially wisdom, there are some things that, you actually have to go get it, um, including this sort of, uh, you know, kind of secretive things, the things that people don't really understand, the things that are kind of hidden, you know, those kind of things. When you reveal and understand those kind of things, 
you are truly kind of, you know, wise. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you both very much. I, I, I think that uh, both of you in your, in your last statements was actually a living example of the last two verses in, at work. Uh, because for me, uh, the dark sayings didn't, didn't make sense to me. Uh, I was thinking dark sayings in terms of darkness is light is good, darkness is bad, and, and um, good and evil. and, and uh, I, I didn't get get the idea that the dark was something mysterious or secret or hidden or something you must seek out to understand. And and uh, so what's what's happened here is um, beautiful because what I'm seeing is the verse uh, six actually played out right before our eyes. It says to understand the proverb and the interpretation. So what you guys did was you provided the uh, so now I understand this verse 6, this proverb. You've interpreted it, and they were, these were words of the wise. You were wise enough to give me an interpretation of this very proverb, and the dark sayings, now I understand. Uh, so we go, if we go back to verse 5, um, if, if I was the wise man, I hear, and I'm, now I've increased my learning, a man of understanding shall attain wise counsel. So I think that I've just gotten some wise counsel from Brother Sam and Brother Bill, uh, the way that they actually, in verse 6 says, interpreted the words of this parable. So uh, I, I hope everybody can appreciate this the way I appreciate this, because I saw this, verse 5 and 6, actually demonstrated and, and I was I was the one that was, uh, you know, we are the three of us, the ones that, that actually characters in that those very verses. Uh, is, is that as is, is that as profound to you as it is to me? Because I really felt felt that uh, uh, it was a perfect application of verse five and six. What I just went through. Oh yeah, perfect. <laughs>to the next verse. Um, we all talked about verse 7 before Bill joined us, so I'm going to give Bill an opportunity to look at verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, um, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Uh, Brother Bill? So I was muted again. I was done, I was done with you then, didn't I? I muted myself. <laughs> oh so are we, are we, are we wanting the the, 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 the classic word, the fear of the Lord's beginning of knowledge. Is that, is that what we're looking at, do you think? I'm, uh, I, uh, Sam and I discussed this verse earlier. I read the first seven verses, and immediately Sam like zeroed in on verse 7 <clears throat> and talked about the fear of the Lord. Uh, the beginning of understanding. So Sam and I already put in our commentary on that. I wanted to give you a chance to talk, talk give your uh, idea of verse 7 before we move on. All right, all right, well, verse 7, all right, let's read it out, let's read it out so people can hear as well. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but falls despise wisdom and instruction. So uh, the, the, the fear of the Lord there, is yeah, it can be literal fear that, that, that you know, God is awesome, and, and and but you know it, it seems to be obviously reverence it is is the is the context there you know to re you know if you could imagine you know the reverence of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge yeah absolutely it is because you need to revere you know your, your God and Creator. And then it goes on, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Well, that that would be the fools, you know. We know, we know very clearly, you know, who who God calls fools, and that is those who don't believe in Him. You know, the fool have said in his heart there is no God. So that would be those that that play, who don't believe in God and reject God, and have no reverence for God. They're the fools. They will never gain this this godly. Understanding that we, you know, that we have, 
but thanks be to God, you know, we revere God and know who he is, you know, and, and we can gain this, this blessing. Yeah, before we move on, I'd like to talk about the word fool and the use of the word fool. Um, I know uh, from memory that there is a verse where, in red letters where Jesus said, do not call any man fool. And then I know that Paul, uh, he did call some people fools. He even called these people in Galatia foolish Galatians. Uh, and now we have here again the idea of a fool. And we're going to see over and over again the word fool used all throughout the book of Proverbs. And, uh, and other things, too. There's, there's other really derogatory descriptions of people. Uh, and, and, and of course, Jesus did some kind of name calling, and that he he called the Pharisees, you know, snakes and vipers and whitewashed tombs and hypocrites. And so these are applications of calling names. And uh, uh, let's talk about the idea of if, if it's appropriate. Is it when is it appropriate to use these names like? calling someone a fool. And, uh, you, you said that you cited the verse that scripture says, a fool says in his heart there is no God. And uh, uh, I gave you examples of Jesus and, and, and Paul uh, using these terms to describe people in a negative light. So uh, we know that there are times when it's applicable. Let me get your reaction to that, whoever wants to go first. Yeah, yeah, well, there's a time and a, and a place in there for everything. There's a time for love and a hate and for war and peace. Uh, and is the context, you know, Paul was calling the Galatians for us because, you know, they would they was listening to a false gospel. And then it would be a false god, you know, that they'd land up worshiping. And obviously, the fool said in his heart, there is no god. So again, the same principle there. I think it's right. Not that we should go around and wear it as a banner, right? Anyone who don't believe in God or believe the gospel, we should just by default call them a fool. But there does come to a point where they're so far down the rabbit hole of rejecting God and rejecting the, the glorious gospel, you know, that they have become fools by default in that sense. So, yeah, context. You can't just call someone a fool if they've got uh, intellectual problems or, or they're... You know, they've got a disability and they can't speak properly or stutter or something you just don't like. That would be the wrong context. But obviously, if someone utterly rejects God, they hate, you know, the saints. They hate, you know, this God of the Bible and, and, and the glorious gospel. Then I think it's legitimate to, to, to call them at fools. Well, we know as we go through Proverbs, we're going to hear the word fool used many times. And so... Uh, I, I think that we will have to agree that uh, it is appropriate to identify someone as a fool if they are behaving foolishly. So that's uh, that's the key. But first, let, let me hey. welcome Brother Roy. I want to ask Brother Roy. Um, you know the plan. Uh, if you're if you're not talking, you mute your microphone. If you are talking, we'll all mute you. Turn on your mic. Brother Roy, thank you for joining us. You just take a moment to introduce yourself, and then we'll tell you. I don't know how much you were familiar with what we've done so far. Yeah, I, I got your message earlier, but I wasn't able to join. So, Luke, thank you. Hey, guys. Um, Roy Montero, California, uh, 58 years young, uh, believer in, uh, well, Jesus Christ since I was 30, so that makes it like 27-plus years. Yeah, um, you're a fool if you say there is no God. So uh, I would just like to start with that. <laughs> hey, Ro, how are you doing? Welcome. Um, I'd like to um, just kind of add on to what has been discussed, especially speaking of fools, uh, because I do use this quite a bit in many different forms. And I get to, uh, you know, <laughs> be given a lot of... Uh, scriptures, including uh, Matthew 5, 22. I think Brother Luke was alluding at that time, uh, not calling people fool. But thing is, we have to, uh, I mean, we are KJV guys, and if we look at KJV, it does say uh, he's uh, with his brother, and I think Brother Bill was uh, alluding 
do that as well, uh, who do not believe on God or, or believe on Christ and, and so forth. Uh, obviously, he is not a son of God. Therefore, uh, we cannot say strictly that he is a brother. And, of course, to call a son of God a fool, uh, obviously, you shall be in danger of hellfire. But uh, if you call fool, if you call a fool a fool, I don't think you will be in danger of hellfire. Um, Brother Luke has said, if someone is acting foolish, then you can call him fool. I disagree with that because, you know, our uh, subjective point of view can mistreat and misjudge others. So what we got to do is we got to do so based on the scripture and and also that starts from whether he has faith or not. Um, so if he has faith in Christ, obviously that makes him a son of God and he is a brother. And as Matthew 5, 5 said, um, Matthew 5, 22 said, but I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And the sentence continues. And it, it's obviously uh, talking about our brothers, brethren, uh, in whole sentence. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of counsel, but whosoever shall, shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. So this particular uh, verse, I think, is talking about not everyone, but uh, our brethren. And to call sons of God fools or to point your finger and say, hey, you are fake or uh, you are a fool to a son of God, that means that you might be in danger of hellfire. I think that's the verse is talking about. So it kind of go along the line with what Brother Bill said about, you know, whether this person uh, believes in God, meaning total trust. You know, not any in the sense of existence. So, you know, that that's that's what it means when the scripture says and mentions about fool. You know, fool is not uh, you know, as Brother Bill was saying, you know, fool is not someone who is disabled. Fool is someone who reject God. I, I wanna give Brother Roy a chance to talk, but first make a brief comment. The idea uh, of uh, not calling a, a saint a fool, uh, I, I have to admit that uh, e even since I was born again, uh, I've done some foolish things, and I, I, th I think if we are honest, we, we all have to admit that. And uh, as we go through the book of Proverbs, um, Brother Roy has posted a, a, a verse 26, 4 and 5, but you're going to see that all throughout all the Proverbs, the word fool and examples of foolishness are given. There's all kind of, not believing in God is the chief cornerstone for a fool. <laughs> you know, that's the starting point. But there's all kinds of other kinds of bad behavior that the book of Proverbs is condemning as foolish. So uh, go ahead, Brother Roy. Hey, Luke, thanks. Yeah, no, I mean, when we're talking about fools, I mean, the Bible has so much to say in Proverbs about a fool and uh, foolishness. Not when you just said you've done a lot of foolish things, I too have done a lot of foolish things. I think all of us have done foolish things, but that doesn't make you a fool. In other words, all of us have lied, but that doesn't make us a liar. So <clears throat> if you're in Christ, if you're born again, like you just said, Luke, then, uh, you know, you just do foolish things for whatever reason. Maybe you don't know any better, maybe you do, maybe you're stubborn, what, whatever the case may be, but that doesn't make you a fool when we read these things in the Bible. A fool does this, a fool does that. That only refers to people that are not in Christ, that refuse uh, the substitutionary death of Christ, and they say, well, I'm going I'm to live life according to my rules. Uh, uh, screw the rules of the Creator who made me, because, uh, yeah, I'm going to shake my fist at him and say, <laughs> blank. <laughs> so when we get into these types of discussions, for me anyway, um, it, it, it's usually best 
uh, to discuss this with believers because discussing fools or excuse me foolish things with fools is non-productive in, in, in my humble opinion especially if they've already said to me and, and I've encountered this quite a bit well Roy even if I someday find out that God does exist I'm still not gonna worship him because he's evil <laughs> and, and when I when I run across a person who thinks like this, walks like this, talks like this, I just got to do what the scriptures say, and that is dust off my shoes and move on to the next person. This is a lost cause. I don't know. How about you guys? Yeah, that's a that interesting point. That uh, uh, one that uh, uh, we're not fools necessarily, just because we sometimes do foolish things. Uh, I'll have to think about that. Uh, but the the idea that uh, uh, these some people are going to reject God to that extent would be very foolish. Uh, an ex extreme example of foolishness. Uh, but you talked about talking about this among believers. Well, uh, this is your first time in one of my uh, Bible talk shows here. These hangouts, and um, nobody in my joins my shows unless they are a believer. So we we can be confident. I, I don't want our study to be tainted and taken off into crazy directions because we're dealing with fools. Uh, so yeah, I would say that uh, we're saints uh, and we have the Holy Spirit, so I wouldn't classify us as, as fools, even though sometimes I still do some foolish things. Uh, let me ask uh, Brother Bill to comment. I haven't heard from him for a while. No, I, I think what, what Brother Roy has just said there is spot on. Maybe it's best we say, yeah, when, when you're in Christ, you do silly things <laughs> instead of foolish things. Because I've, I've certainly done a lot of silly things and dark things, but, you know, he's right, you know, we're, we're, well, that was the only way you could use that, that when you're in Christ, you're a fool, is that what the Apostle put, I'm a fool for Christ, in that sense, with the, with the correct context and connotations that it's a blessing to be a fool in Christ. But it's a dangerous thing to be a fool without Christ. Yeah, I, I've had people tell me, Luke, you've lost your mind. You're, you've gone crazy. I said, well, yeah, I'm, I'm crazy about Jesus. I admit it. <laughs> All right, we'll move on to the next verse now. Uh, Brother Roy, um, in Proverbs chapter 1, we've discussed verses 1 through 7 so far. So we'll move on now to verse 8. My son... Hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother, for they shall be an ornament of grace upon thy head, and chains about thy neck. Uh, all right, let me get your reaction just to verses verses eight and nine. And uh, whoever unmutes first, just go ahead. No, uh, I muted first, so I guess guess I'm gonna go first. <laughs> um, you know, mother and father. Yeah, what a what a good combo. You know, um, one cannot live with one uh, one without. You know, we cannot be here without one. <laughs> we both need them. Um, you know, I get I got a, got a lot of instruction from my father when I was a kid. Scolded a lot, spanked a lot, got spanked a lot, and all so forth. Whereas my mom also uh, spanked me, but she was always, always nurturing. Um, you know, whenever I think, whenever I come across with that passage, I kind of feel like, you know, like the law of God and the law of man, they both should be uh, balanced and and respect it. I think that kind of reminds me that as well, you know. I don't know what other guys you guys think, but um, just kind of, you know, balance balance yourself out in a way. I asked Brother Bill uh, to, to consider those verses and give me your thoughts on that. Well, yeah, to me, the self-explanatory, out of what we've read so far, we've had to delve a little bit deep. To me, you know, these are quite self-explanatory. These are just, you know, sensible wisdom words. You know, you know, 
hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. You know, and that goes on and says, For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head and chains about thy neck. You know, so there's great, you know, they're expressing there's, there's great riches in, in, in and relational value uh, by having, you know, the instruction from your father and, and, and being taught, you know, the law by your mother to the point that they're, they're like an ornament, like, you know, gold chains even around, around your neck. They're, they're really valuable. That, that's how I say it, you know, to, to, to that, give them, you know, to, to listen to the instructions of good, godly, wise parents it is, is, you know, very valuable. And that's, that's what I think he's trying to express there. They are literally an ornament upon your head and, and gold chains around your neck, you know, far more valuable even than that. Yeah, I, I don't know if Roy is back, but uh, if he's not back, I'll, I will talk about this for a moment. I just want to make this personal. Uh, I've met a lot of people who have, unfortunately, born into a family where their family was, the uh, situation was bad. They did not have good parents, and they end up having bad relationships and, and didn't get this kind of um, help from their parents and ended up not wanting to do anything with their parents when they got older, when they grew up. Uh, and that's, I find that very sad. I, I, I was, I've been so blessed, even though my parents didn't teach me the Bible, teach me about Jesus, unfortunately uh, for that, but uh, they, they, they were always positive and encouraging to me. I didn't have the kind of parents that were beating me down verbally and, and you know and, and ridiculing and you know I did they did not spare the rod though you know a few occasions my father let me have it and my mother took a switch to me or belt to me seemed like daily my my little sister used to get a lot of pleasure out of running and picking our switch off of a tree or mom I said mommy mommy can I get the big belt this time. <laughs> But I wasn't abused. I was I was spanked, and I, I and I for, for you know disobeying. Uh, but I always I never had an argument with my parents as an adult. As a child, it's different. But it was in, as a, once I grew up, there was never any dissension between me and my mother or my father. Never did we have any crosswords or arguments. I only have fond memories, and I feel so. So thankful for that. I really do think that these verses apply in this case, even though they didn't give me godly instructions from the scriptures, um, they gave me encouragement and love. And uh, I do have, you know, great, great memories. Like, and I literally like chains around my neck, the memories of my parents. I, I feel so blessed that I had that kind of experience. And I know that many people I've, do not have that kind of relationship those memories with their parents. So let me uh, shut up and see if anybody else wants to talk about those. Well, I, I, I suppose I, I just, you know, I need to add that, you know, that what you just said is, is, is good and it is wholesome, you know, that, and I suppose it is always as you grow up, you appreciate it, don't you? What, you know, while you're young, and you've under chastened quite. I was under chastened quite a lot. I was quite a naughty kid, <laughs> but but because they cared for me, loved me, is why I was under so much chastening, and I, I deserved it, and I asked for it. But I suppose you know, we looking back now, you know, I, I can say, oops, I can say that 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 they are like chains around my neck. You know, they kept me kept me in line, kept me in touch. And eventually, you know, it did lead me, you know, into salvation, you know, because although they, they, they weren't Christian until about three or four years before I was, they was always brought up in that generation that had, you know, godly principles and even Christian principles. I was brought up with that. And they came to Christ about two, three years before I did. So, benign or unbeknown to me, you know, the, 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 the godly counsel they gave and the godly manner that I was brought up, you know, paid dividends in the end. 
it must have seeped into my subconscious, into my very soul at some point, to the point that, you know, I did accept Christ in the end. You know, so I think that's very important, it is your upbringing. And, and, and yeah, okay, uh, I'll move on if uh, no one wants to add to that. Uh, let's go to verses uh, uh, nine, uh, 10, starting with verse 10. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and, and whole as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall find our houses with spoil. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their, their path. I'm going to stop there. There's a lot said. Ten, ten, ten and eleven really speak volumes to me. Now, I can't mention names. Me and you were privy to a conversation uh, less than 20, well, 24 hours ago. And without mentioning names, this really speaks volumes that, 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 that a godly person was enticed to do wrong to, to another godly person by an ungodly person. And resisted that, and, and, and like I say, we, we we had a private conversation, no names mentioned about this very thing, and, and that godly person, you know, really shoo his metal to me, you know, to the point that, you know, I, I was feeling blessed that that, that 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 another brother in Christ would would show his love in that way, and stick up for another brother. You know exactly what I'm talking about. I can't go into details, but. Them, them verses there, they're speaking real volumes into my soul at this moment. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's one of the probably many examples we'll get uh, as we go through Proverbs of um, hanging out with the wrong people, being influenced by them, peer pressure, going along with people that are, are up to mischief and no good, even evil, like murder. Um, uh, I, I can I can relate to that in, in my in my youth. Uh, I I was influenced by a lot of friends, and uh, we didn't murder anybody. I, I do have several friends <laughs> in jail for murder, though. But uh, I wasn't there, and I didn't murder anybody. But this this kind of uh, environment of um, associating your friends that are uh, up to no good and being influenced by them we're, we're told here no don't don't go with the crowd uh, particularly when they're up to no good don't don't get this mob mentality where everybody's got going to do something bad and you, you just join along uh, is anybody else there uh, or any else back yet Sam or Roy Okay, if not, Brother brother Bill, uh, anything else to add to that before we move on? No. no. Don't have anything to say. He's back. He's back. He's back. Okay. Sam, do you hear the verses we were discussing? Oh, I don't have much to say. I think it's pretty straightforward. You know, and as I said, uh, like in verse 8, the instruction of thy father, uh, the law of thy mother, I think we can kind of Compare that to the law of this earth, like the law of men, and the instruction of thy father, I could, you know, uh, further interpret as the uh, instruction of God. Um, both uh, we need to hear, of course. Uh, and it's pretty much straightforward for me. i just like to throw out, you know, just kind of wild ideas out there, you know, from from different perspectives, you know, that I thought that would be a little interesting. So I don't know how you guys think about that. 
Okay, uh, brother, you, you must have had to step away because we, we jumped ahead uh, quite a few verses. We discussed it beyond beyond the part about the mother and father. We discussed it verses 10. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, 10 through uh, 15. And if you want to read 10 through 15, do you have it in front of you or do you want me to read it to you again? Oh, I'll read it. Yeah. My it's, son, yeah. if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. That's pretty common sense. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. That's not cool. <laughs> let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. This is, this is, this sort of like a cons conspiracy, this sort of uh, like planning, evil planning, I, I see that a lot from atheist wannabes. And I, I have personal experience about this. About my, you know, how they did, you know, with uh, child exploiting and all that. Uh, I don't want to go through that, but anyway, yeah, that's so true, isn't it? Let us swallow them up alive as the grave, yea, and and whole, and as those that go down into the pit. Amen. You know, Maranatha. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our horses with spoil. Cast in thine lot among us. Let us all have one purse. My son, walk thou, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. So, you know, all those evil planning, conspiracy, you know, keep yourself away. Uh, you don't have to, like, uh, you know, always going around and, you know, chasing after gossips and... <laughs> Um, I mean, wasting your, you know, God-given time. Uh, those things are not really wise. And, you know, uh, I mean, to hurt somebody, actually, plenty to hurt somebody, that'll, that, that'll only get you in trouble. It's basically, it's pretty much common sense here. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty extreme example of, of a murder and, and a robbery and, and uh, a mob or a gang of young men and then someone possibly being influenced to join them and he's, he's told my son as, as though a father is in, giving instructions wise words to his son saying don't get caught up in that don't let the peer pressure of these bad people get you so you get involved in these evil things you you've got to have enough sense to refrain and, and uh, even don't hang out with those people but you know uh, I know I did I, I caught up got caught up in a lot of those things when I was young and, uh, and uh, but hopefully people will learn from these words and as a young man learn that don't let the peer pressure of your, of, and if you're if you're associating with these kinds of bad people, you've got to leave them because they're going to be a bad influence on you. Is what he's saying. Wise words from a father to a son. Okay, brother Bill, anything before we move on? No, no. I think I think we've covered all of that. You know, they're very very wise signs, and, and yeah, it is. You know, personally, as you know already, it's spoken volumes, especially to. You know what has been going on recently. You know with with, with many saints, and, and you know, there, but there are still godly people that that will refuse to take counsel against other godly people, uh, and and I think that's a blessing, and we really need to count that. Yeah, yeah. These uh, these words uh, really ring true, even though we're not a young man. I don't think any of us here. Are like you know, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen years old. Uh, this this is the type of thing where a father is saying to his young son, giving these kinds of instructions, and uh, we you know we, we hopefully we've already learned these. I'm 64, and, and you guys are all varying ages behind me, but uh, we're not young boys uh, hearing this. But but you're right. Uh, we have seen other people who never learned these lessons and are doing these evil things and these conspiring and, and working against us and, and it's really evil and uh, we uh, we know better though so 
let's move on now to this next part. Uh, uh, my son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path, for their feet run to evil, and make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. I'm going to have to have that explained to me. And they lay wait for their own blood. They lurk privily for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. Okay. Uh, uh, to speak up if you want to comment on that. What do you, what do you need understanding? Verse 17 you said? Surely in vain the net is spread in, in the sight of any bird. That's me, that means that um, if you cast the net, if you trap, you know, when you, tra when you are putting the traps you know, for, you know, for games, if you put those net when they can see, <laughs> you know, they will not go into the net, obviously. So what you're doing is in vain. So surely in vain, the net, the net is spread in the side of any bird. So obviously, no, no stupid bird will be going into that net if you cast the net where they can see being, being laid, where it's being spread. Uh, you got on mute. All right. Um, the the entire group of verses, the idea of him telling him son to uh, not associate with those people, and I I said earlier that I have associated with those people, and I have a, a list of friends that are uh, either dead or in prison uh, because of all these kinds of things. And fortunately, I was I was spared. I would I did bad things, but I wasn't caught. I don't know if the Lord intervened and and, and was somehow uh, protected me uh, because there was a, some purpose for me. But I know that. Uh, I but for the grace of God, I would be dead or in prison for the things I've done and the the associations that I kept. So uh, I. I wish I had learned this and heeded this when I was a young man, um, Brother Bill. Yeah, yeah, as as you was reading those verses out and I was going through, Galatians six seven come out, you know, clear as anything that says, "Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap." And that is the same thing with a net, you know. And it mentioned somewhere else as well that. You know, the people, they, they fall in their own trap. They set a trap up for the innocent. Somewhere else in full robes, but they fall into their own trap. And even Jesus describes this, you know, the blind leading the blind. So, yeah, you know, be not, really be not deceived. Anyone out there who's not in, in Christ at the moment, that if, if you're going to follow along the worldly wisdom and try and make gain, even if it means shedding blood, you know, uh, making false accusations or, or causing harm upon any, you know, anyone else in humanity, let alone a brother and sister in Christ, you will reap what you sow. And we get that we get the warnings clear as anything from Proverbs. And this is the wisest man on earth we're talking about, apart from Christ, who was God. So, you know, I pray, be attentive to, to, to what we you know, what has been taught today. Be attentive to the Proverbs. And, and, and please don't mock God because you will reap what you sow. Uh, do you have uh, anything to say about verse 7? Uh, Sam explained it to me. Uh, do you, uh, did you look at any uh, other translations or commentary in verse 17? Uh, verse 7, you mean about the bird? Uh, I was asking Bill if, if he had looked at if he didn't or would uh, at least look at some other translations in verse 17. No, uh, I, 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 I basically I, is talking about you know whatever is being done with this evil will be all in vain. Um, I, I don't. 
Yeah, I, I understand your, your explanation of it. I wanted to get further explanation from Bill or, or a commentary. I'm not, I'm not questioning what you said. I just want to try to hear more. So, Bill, oh, do you have anything to add on that? Well, by the word, I'm just looking in there and it says, you know, where it mentions that, that doing things in vain. Uh, let me, let me, let me, because you want me to, to go into a bit more depth for verse 17. So, surely in vain, you know, that, that word is the one I think we're trying to grasp. Uh, you know, well, I, I, could, I could look up on a parallel. Bible and, and look at verse 17 in, in other translations. I want to look at it in, in other translations. Yeah, yeah could, you give me some, could you give me that in a couple other translations? Yeah. I can do it, but okay, my problem then, is if, yeah, I try okay. to, if I try to maneuver around back and forth sometimes, I end up clicking the wrong thing. I'd, I'd rather not admit that you're more capable at that. Okay, okay, I should look, I should look. So that, that's 117, is it the one you could get me one? Yeah, 117. I'd like to hear that verse in an amplified version or something like that. <laughs> okay, okay, is it there? Uh, we've got the, sometimes the amplified version is helpful. Let's have a look. In the... You've got uh, oh, God, there's so many versions on it. It's actually embarrassing. But that I'm trying to find the amplified, and I can't find the amplified. But I've got the New Living Translation, which is reasonably okay. And that says, if a bird sees a trap being set, it knows to stay away. I think that's that's very plain and straightforward to to any, anyone listening now. You know, and that, and that is what we've been emphasizing. You know, and that's what I was trying to emphasize when I said that, that God is not mocked. You know, it, it, a bird, if a bird with a small brain can see a trap and, and know to fly away from it and keep well away from it, knowing that, that the consequences would be dire, then, then so much for, you know, so for, you know, that, that in Galatians, you know, that, that if, if you think you can go mocking God, you know, if, if you've shown that sort of thing you're going to reap a whirlwind and and if a bird can understand that that basic reap and sowing kind of mentality you know we, we as humans ought to as well okay uh, that uh, that seems to agree with, with sam's uh, explanation of the yeah, verse right basically, basically what the the proverb is saying is that if you do evil things then you are less than bird brain <laughs> That's yeah. what I'm saying, basically. Yeah. I, I, I was thinking the same thing just before you said that. That's good. Okay. Uh, I'm going to move on now to uh, verse uh, 20. Oh, by the way, when it says, Wisdom crieth out, she uttereth her voice in the streets. Many times, uh, not only in uh, Proverbs, but I think even in uh, Ecclesiastes, uh, or Song of Solomon, one of the two is talking about wisdom, like as a woman. So um, this is a, a, you keep this in mind that it's it's been written in a way that like wisdom as a woman, a wisdom crieth out, crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates, in the city. She uttereth her word, saying. How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Let's stop there. Uh, okay, whoever wants to comment first, feel free. Well, I suppose, on a personal note, it is it just reminds me, I suppose, because I actually went straight preaching today. And you do cry loud and almost scream at times the, 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 the goodness of Christ. Yet people in... So there's difference between the simplicity that is in Christ Jesus and the simplicity that is in people's lives and they're indifferent to you know, Christ. There's a big difference there. So you know, in, their, in their simplicity, they're, they're quite happy to go along you know, throughout life rejecting Christ as long as they've got the nicest 
shirt, the nicest jacket, and, and the best clothes, and the nicest food. And you know, oftentimes they just walk past and ignore. You know, the wisdom. It's not wisdom from me. This is wisdom from the Holy Scriptures that I'm proclaiming. You know, these are the words of life that are going out to a simple people. And if only they would just, as Sam said, get out of that bird brain and think for themselves and see there's more to life than just this. That would do wonders. That's why that's speaking to me. That, that you know, this wisdom, this this godly wisdom, is crying out in the streets. Come on, accept Christ. Come on, you know, be born again. Come on, be a son of God. It's simple in Christ Jesus, but the simple in the world can't grasp it until, you know, I suppose God reveals it to them. The Holy Ghost, you know, he desires that all be saved and speaks to them. But sometimes you, we have to turn our ears and be a little bit attentive. And I mentioned that as well when I was preaching, you know. Actually, be attentive. Turn your ears to the good news tonight. Well, I'm... Uh... I'm not really surprised, but I'm, I'm seeing the relevance in everything we've been discussing, relevance in our lives right now. Uh, we've encountered these people. Uh, I, I was that person many years ago. Uh, I now we encounter these people today who are up to no good. And, and, uh, and you, the street preaching today, you see this as an application to what you experienced just today. That here you are giving wisdom, the wisdom unto knowledge, the knowledge of salvation, and uh, people are not receiving the wisdom of, uh, for the most part. Uh, so it, it is really always timely and relevant to, to us. Um, Brother Sam, do you want to talk about those verses? Yeah, I think uh, Brother Bill... Um, you know, he hit it right on the spot, I think, uh, again. So, basically, wisdom, she's quite frustrated, you know, she's, she's in the streets, you know, she's, uh, she's in, in public places, you know, where a lot of people are, you know, basically she's saying, like, you idiots, where, until when are you going to be so stupid to the point that, you know, you're gonna be spanked <laughs> by by God. Uh, uh, like how long is simple ones will he love simplicity? It's like if to me it's like how long you stupid ones <laughs> will you will you love stupidity? You will you love stupidity? It's like uh, reading Romans one, and the scorners delight in their scorning, and the fools hate knowledge. Um, and also, so like I feel like uh, if you can close your eyes, and imagine that Christ is speaking, and uh, you know, at the temple, for example, when he was um, throwing up all those money exchangers, I could see him saying this uh, before he did what he did. Uh, I could see him saying this. Uh, before Pharisees, uh, so it's, it's, it feels to me that Christ is, Christ is actually speaking. You know, how long are you going to be like this? You know. Yeah. I, I again, I, I just I'm uh, the the relevance to to this right to us here and now is is pretty amazing to me. The idea that uh, uh, she, uh, the, the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Uh, I mean, Brother Bill was out street preaching today, and I don't know if he received a lot of scorn. I know that he's going to receive less scorn than uh, the, most of the street preachers that I know because they're also being scorned just because they're just hateful people for, for uh, unfortunately they're, they're, they're not preaching the love of God they're, they, they have a many, many and not all but they have kind of a hateful attitude it seems like they really hate the sinners and actually want them to go to hell yeah, but, so, uh, but even when you're preaching the love of God and the free gift of salvation Brother Bill, sometimes you, you, 
you encounter scorners. They scorn you, and they, they are foolish. They, they hate the knowledge. They hate the, the truth that you are, are giving them. Do, do you have encountered much conflict from, from these people, that in any kind of confrontations? I know that when I separated myself from these bad street preachers, the kind of response I was getting from the public was far better. It was a totally different environment around me and, and Brother Frank when we are street preaching. It was a, an aura of love and grace around us rather than an aura, an aura of, of um, you know, tension. And, 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 and because of that, the people were more likely to receive the good news and, and be uh, uh, not scorning. Uh, what kind of experience did, can you say that you had today and normally? Yeah, today, today weren't too bad. It was, well, well like I said, I had, I had a little bit of bad. If you watch me a video about halfway through, there was someone, as I was preaching, they said, oh, you know, they, they said, oh, Jesus Christ. But then I took that up and said, yep, that's right, Jesus Christ is the one you need to put your trust in. So I took that as banter. It was, so it started off with scorning. You know, if I was a turn and burn hellfire and damnation preacher, I would have said, you blasphemer, you're going to burn in the eternal lake of fire, wicked child. But I say, all I said was, that's right. That's the one you need to trust in. So you, you've got to use a better, again, godly wisdom. You know, we're not enemies with the world. We, you know, Christ is not enemies in the world in that sense. You know, he, he, he so loved this world that he died for this world. And that is why, you know, we, we've got to keep preaching reconciliation and love. And, and you'll bang on. That the trouble I mostly get is, is, is prior baggage of, of people who have preached there before me and, and people who have, you know, proliferated that whole area with turn and burn and lordship salvation. And people have heard that so much that they, they still, even now after seven years, assume that someone's standing on the wall, they're preaching the gospel, that means you're all going to hell. And, and, and that is the baggage, unfortunately, I'm still carrying a well, and I may always do until the end of my days. But nonetheless, I will still preach Christ crucified, and I will still preach reconciliation and the love that this God has. But yet, yeah, let them go on with it. If they want to scorn, let them scorn. If they don't want to, then they don't. But I'm still going to preach the, the true gospel and, and be as true as I can in, in my human frailty. Yeah. 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 Um. Um, probably a lot of people cannot relate to this part of the conversation. Uh, very few people will go out publicly and uh, just um, talking to random strange people that you don't know and proclaiming the good news about Jesus. Very few people do that. So a lot of these people, they, they it's hard for them to understand what we're talking about right now, but uh, there is a huge difference when when the gospel is presented as good news and is presented as a love story instead of just condemnation and judgment and finger pointing and, and that kind of thing. But there, you're right, there's a lot of baggage because so many people have experienced these false teachers and then they built up a wall. This is kind of on my list of the top five reasons people reject Christianity is because of their experiences with this kind of uh, uh, false message. They, they, they built up a, a, a misunderstanding about Jesus and, and, and salvation, and they have a, a bad, this bad experience is making that even harder. But sometimes the contrast stands out. They can say, wow, brother, you're, you're, brother Bill, you're a, uh, you're, the way you're t t doing this and that what you're saying is totally different. It's very refreshing. I'm really so happy to hear this. This really is good news. I know that you get that kind of reaction sometimes. I, I've had that reaction many times myself. Let's uh, move on and I'll give you the last word of that, Brother Bill, and then we'll move on to the next few verses. Yeah, yeah, just agreeing. Yeah, when, when some people, because they do, a couple of people did today, but generally on a, on a Saturday when I preach, you do get... Unfortunately, I wish we could record the people listening because it's sound. You know, when you see you preaching, you just see me and don't see the people sitting opposite listening. But generally, on a Saturday, they might start off a little bit, you know, kind of hard and, and a bit antagonistic towards the message, obviously because they're used to the, the the turn and burn rubbish. But after listening for about five, 
you know, to 10 minutes, they start to warm. And oftentimes off camera, you know, we have good conversations. So I think what I might do, just for the benefit of you, Luke, and some others out there, you know, I might ask the permission of, of people that I'm chatting to, just so, you know, we, we can show that, you know, the, the, the good news, the real gospel, the genuine Christ we preach, does actually influence people. It does touch people, and it does make them, you know, less less scornful and less, you know, less nasty when they hear the good news. Yeah, I um, on my list of uh, street preaching videos of, of my experiences out there, now there are, are several examples of um, personal interaction with individuals. Uh, sometimes you're just preaching to the crowd and and they're either listening or, you know, a lot of people I've noticed come by and, and they put one finger up I, I, to me and I, I, I'm saying thank you, you know, you think I'm number one, I appreciate that, but really it's Jesus that's number one. <laughs> they're, they're giving me one finger, so, but... Yeah, the, mid the middle finger sometimes important. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, but, but many times you're talking to a, a large group of people and you don't have that personal interaction and other times you get the chance to have a dialogue with one or two people and I have uh, uh, recorded several of those uh, that you can see this very thing where people say this is uh, uh, totally different I, I'm you've really opened my eyes I had no idea that that's what the Bible says and, and they are, they're appreciative that they finally are enlightened. Uh, so that's, that's a good, I hope you do get some examples of that. I think we probably get, uh, let me see, what verse are we on here? What was the last one I read anyway, if you remember? 23? No, it's, is it 22, the last verse I read? I think the rest of verses are pretty much going to state the fact that um, despite that all the pleading from God, all the you know extension of love from God, despite even um, Christ, uh, you know God in the flesh, despite Christ came, God Himself came. Despite all that, you refused God, uh, meaning reprobates who have continuously refused the love of God, and. And later on, basically, God is saying Christ is going to come in vengeance this time. When I come back, I'm going to come back with vengeance. I think that's pretty much the rest of the whole verses, I think. Uh -huh. and, and the verse for 33 especially, But whoso hearken unto me shall dwell safely, and shall be, this is very important, shall be quiet, from fear of evil. So, you know, those of us who fear God actually don't fear evil. So if, if you don't want to fear evil, you can, you know, you got to fear God. <laughs> so, like, are you going to fear God or are you going to fear evil? Yeah, I'd rather fear God and gain knowledge and wisdom at the same time and have no fear you know, totally quiet from fear of the evil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I think your summary is, is very, very good. And I will, uh, let's read these remainder verses all one time. And we'll see that it's saying exactly what you've been, your summary was. And, and then we can conclude here. Um, starting with verse uh, 23. Uh, Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Now, I, I, I like the, the listener right now to think of this in two, in two ways. Uh, as though this is, when it says, I will pour out my spirit unto you, uh, that this is wisdom. That's the, the subject of this, uh, this chapter here in this particular portion. And it started off saying that, uh, Wisdom crieth out, she uttereth her voice in the street. So you could look at this as being wisdom, but, but those of us who are evangelists, who, are, who, who uh, want to tell everybody about Jesus and his salvation, 
you can also uh, do the same thing, put in here that this is the gospel. This is the good news about Jesus and how people are going to either accept it or they're going to reject it. So as I'm reading that, put that in your head. Because I have called and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But ye have set at naught all my counsel and would none of my reproof. I will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. For they shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge, and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Uh, they would none of my counsel, they despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way, and will be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. And, but whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet from fear of evil. I think we can relate this whole thing to, as I said, just wisdom. If you receive the wisdom, you're not going to suffer all kinds of bad things in your life, bad consequences. Uh, but at the same time, we could also look at this as the salvation, the good news about Jesus, and how people respond to that. The one thing I would say, emphasize here that it says, uh, 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 they shall call upon me, but I will not answer. In verse 28, they shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. If we're going to apply this to salvation, you'd have to apply this to the person that has already died. Uh, okay, after they call, after they die, it's too late. You, you know, you call upon me now. It's too late. Uh, they hated knowledge, did not choose the fear of the Lord. So um, that's uh, that's how. I think a good summary that you gave Brother Sam about, about those remaining verses. I wanted to finish them up that, that way. If we could finish one chapter each session, I think that would be a good way to try to do this. We might have to split a chapter up uh, occasionally. Uh, so that's, uh, I hope that people will, can gain some wisdom from this uh, study of the first chapter of Proverbs. I'm going to ask uh, each person to give you a chance to kind of summarize your thoughts on this. And then we, of course, want to tell everybody how to how to be wise unto salvation so first uh brother bill what's your your thoughts on the whole study today yeah yeah first forgive me because at the moment i'm i'm being super saint if you, if you notice my background it's not really i'm super but but all the saints all those who are saved and redeemed in christ are, are, are in god's eyes we're super and we're children he loves us dearly that all aside you know what what i'm stuck on is still that that proverbs you know 123 of really that has really stuck out pointedly to me you know i'll quickly read it and then I'll, I'll just explain it says turn you all right at my reproof behold i will pour out my spirit unto you and i will make known my words unto you and i think that ties in beautifully with, with a prophecy that joel gave out in in joel chapter 2 verse 28 and Acts 2.17, when this is where God pours out his spirit upon all flesh. So this this wisdom, this godly wisdom, all right, is available not only just to you know you know Solomon now, it is available to all creatures on earth who seek the face of God. You know, anybody out there, if you want to seek the face of God, you want to seek, you know, godly wisdom, and as Brother Luke said, become wise unto salvation, it is open. And it is offered to every single creature. And I just felt that was pointed. That one verse has opened up a real massive, wonderful can of worms to all flesh. And, and, and it is the impartation of, of God's godly wisdom that makes your boys unto salvation. Amen. Very, uh, very good that you were able to connect all that together. Thank you. Um, Brother Sam or Brother Roy, if you're back. I'll go. Um, thank you for the invite, and I think uh, uh, I think this um, 
you know, the series of uh, study, I think, is going to really edify a lot of people. Um, a lot of times, you know, even on YouTube dramas and confusions, if we are a little wiser, maybe some of those could be lessened a little bit. Uh, but anyway, um, you know, before I was born again, the book of Proverbs actually one of my favorite. You know, after I was born again, my favorite became you know, the book of John. But still, the book of uh, Proverbs is actually one of my favorite. Uh, you know, it basically, chapter one, you know, right off the bat, we're talking about Solomon, uh, how he asked for wisdom. We talked about that, you know, how it is important to ask God for wisdom. You know, we don't have to look for or ask for worldly stuff, uh, you know, as long as we, uh, uh, you know, seek his righteousness and his, uh, and, and the kingdom of God and the will of God. Um, and also we ask wisdom, I think we will be given with a lot of understanding in this, you know, chapter and, and, the, and the rest studies to come. Uh, yeah, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of the wisdom. Uh, I would rather fear Lord other than, rather than fearing evil. Maybe that's why I don't fear evil. Uh, maybe that's why my heart is always content. Maybe that's why I'm always at peace. Because no matter what, um, I feel at peace. Sometimes, of course, we get angry, uh, but it's not something that's uncontrolled. Uh, that's one of the things that I had realized as well. When I express my emotion, I more and more come to realize that those emotions were emotions is and it can be quite controlled. So when we walk our faith in Christ as we live our lives, I think when we actually gain uh, the instruction of God, the uh, it'll, it'll give us la it'll save us a lot of time. It'll save a lot of trouble. It'll give us a lot of knowledge and and. And obviously wisdom, because you know that's the only way that we can get wisdom. You know, by reverent, by fearing, by respecting, by actually acknowledging. You know, you know, it's not like these days where you know some youngsters they kind of disrespect their own parents. You know, sometimes they don't even understand. And as we leave our society, the morality has been going down and and more and more and more. And we will certainly witness more entropy of morality. So unless we are unless we unless we wise up, <laughs> you know, uh, we will be in trouble. You know, this we will be in trouble. Because we'll be stupid. We'll be doing so stupid things because we'll be like so birdie brain, you know. So be wise, listen to Christ, uh, listen to what he got to say. Uh, you know, he did a lot of things for us, <laughs> including, you know, coming here and shedding his precious blood and for our, you know, lazy bum buns, you know, so that we can get our bum bun up and maybe, uh, you know, share our uh, knowledge and wisdom with others, uh, and spreading the gospel of Christ. So that, you know, uh, I mean, eventually what? Eventually uh, we can be off of evil, so to say. Uh, that means we will be less tempted and become more per perfect in Christ as we walk our faith in Christ in our lives. Sorry I got too long. Thank you, Brother Lou, and God bless all of you. Thank you. Uh, no, it wasn't too long. Thank you. I was, I was blessed listening to you. Um, 
I would say in summary that uh, if we seek wisdom as Solomon did first, then it's kind of like uh, Jesus saying, seek, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. Uh, the wisest thing, of course, a person can do is, is uh, get, have the kingdom of God assured to them, eternal life. And uh, that's the first thing uh, that we, the most wise and first, uh, first importance. Uh, we, we've got to, we're also told to listen to your parents. You know, my parents are both deceased, I'm 64. But if you're a young person, uh, respect your parents and listen to them. There's a great, there's a, you will gain a lot in your life if you do, do that. And then also respect God. And, and if, you, if you don't respect God, it says the fear of God is the beginning of understanding. But respect and reverence for God is like of the first utmost importance. And then don't let your, uh, don't be influenced by the gang, by all of the people you know. Be, be strong enough and have enough character to not go along with peer pressure to get involved in bad things. Uh, and then finally, the last part really relates even more so to the salvation message that don't be foolish and reject the truth. Uh, you know, listen, uh, be wise, and take counsel and listen to someone who's telling you this good news about Jesus. Uh, and uh, so that leads us to Brother Bill. I would like to ask him to, uh, uh, we're, we're talking about learning and becoming wise and uh, wisdom is not just understanding things. Uh, wisdom is not just knowledge, but wisdom is the person who has the knowledge and applies it in the right way to their life, then you're wise. So uh, uh, I would say the cornerstone of wisdom is uh, salvation. And so Brother Bill, could, could you tell the people briefly uh, what's the most wise What's the first wise thing that they, they really must do? Well, yeah, yeah. The most important thing is that you do become wise unto salvation. And this salvation has a name. And his name is Jesus Christ, Son of God. Become wise unto God this day. You know, in, in the, pro the, the prophets of old spoke, this is Isaiah, and he said, you know, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. You know, Christ this day can be found. And believe it or no, that, that Christ is near to every creature this day. He is, he's a breath away. He's a word away to this salvation. You know, it, it's, it's not complicated how to be saved. You know, you don't have to do, you know, religious somersaults and, and promise to forsake all your sins and do penance and do everything else. You just need to seek that the heart of, the heart of wisdom, which is Christ himself in this matter. You know, if you call upon Christ, you can be saved. It really is that simple. And, and I would love to quote it, and people may get fed up with me quoting it, but I always quote the example of, of Paul and Silas and the Philippine jail, because it's so simple, it's so pure, and it's so gospel, it's so truthful. You know, he, he was about to kill himself. There was no hope in front of him. You know, he is concerned that these, the, these, because uh, the Philippine jailer, he, he, he was a jailer in them days. If any of your prisoners escaped, you was killed by the Roman authorities. And there was an earthquake, and you know there was, you know, he was fearful that that everyone was going to flee, but they didn't flee. And you know, Paul and Silas calmed him down and said, "No, everyone's here." And then you know, he responded, "So, what must I do to be saved?" He realised something that he needed salvation, not just physical. Because he had that because they never fleed, but he, he saw the depth and needed a spiritual salvation. And and born size, all they said is, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That is how simple it really is. You know, we don't have to have all the facts in order to be saved. We don't have to know about the hypostatic union, that the, the, the atonement, the propitiation. These are all things we learn when we come to Christ. But to be saved this very day. All you've got to do is call upon this Christ and he will make your voice unto salvation and he will, you know, speak to you. You know, he will let you know, especially through his, his word, which is the Bible, and especially for those who, who are Christians that you, you may know. 
you know, they, they will explain these things in greater detail. But the initial point is, you know, you need to just be wise unto salvation. Call upon this Jesus Christ, you know, while he is, you know, while he can be found. And call upon him while he is near. Because he is very near this day. And he is very dear to every, he loves every creature this day. Call upon him. If you want a little bit more detail, and you want to know some things that will certainly assure you this day of salvation, know this, that he loves you dearly, and he's made pain for all your wrongs. That's everything you've ever done in your old life, going to do in the future. He's made pain for that this day. All right? All you need to do is believe that fact, and the fact that he died for you because he loved you, and he rose again victorious for you because he loves you. He didn't have to do it, but he desired to do it. And when he rose again in resurrection power, which he did, and we've just celebrated at Easter, you know, he defeated sin, he defeated death, and he defeated hell for all those who would trust him. And Brother Luke explained this, I think, in our last hangout. And it is an important point. You know, to believe on Christ is to trust on Christ. You know, there's an old saying in England, maybe in America as well, maybe all over the world, that you, you put all your eggs in one basket. You know, so if you've got half a dozen eggs, you don't put five in the basket, you know, and keep one aside for yourself, or you think you might be good enough, or if you, if you behave yourself, you might get to heaven. No, you chuck every single egg in one basket, and that basket is Jesus Christ. Put your trust in him and what he's done for you to this day, and I promise you, and the word of God says, and Christ himself, you know, God himself, you know, has promised that you will receive eternal life. And we have a blessing that God is not like us. He doesn't lie. The word even said that God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent, which is to change his mind. If he has promised this day that if you believe, put all your eggs in that one basket on him, you are guaranteed to go to heaven. And you're guaranteed to live forever in paradise. Where there's no more tear. There's no more sadness. There is only grace, mercy and ever abounding love in the sight of God. So I pray and encourage, call upon this Christ today, while he may be found. And then I'll leave it at that. And I do pray, if you do accept Christ, encourage us, encourage Brother Luke, by leaving a comment. If you're thinking about it, you know, please correspond with us. Because, you know, every soul is dear to Christ. And if Christ is implanted on our hearts, you know, that, 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 that we proclaim this good news and proclaim the love of God, you know, Please do correspond with us. It's so important this day. I'll leave it with you and God bless. <laughs> yeah, very appropriate to all that applause uh, because uh, every, anybody who really understood what Bill said, and it's really quite simple, that's really, really good news. And if you understand what he said, you should be jumping for joy right now saying, Thank you, Jesus. I love you. Thank you so much for dying for me, for giving me eternal life. And um, that's it's that simple. So uh, I want to thank the panelists for participating. And uh, uh, we will we will be here again next Wednesday to take on Chapter 2 in Proverbs. We also have a, a Bible talk show every Sunday, and we're talking about the subject of the uh, eternal sonship. Of Jesus so uh, you're welcome to join us or, or watch that show too so thank you for watching panelists I'm not gonna I'm ending the live broadcast but I'll keep this thing up so that we can talk privately and have some fellowship after this so bless you all in the name of our great Savior God Jesus Christ <laughs>